Thank you for being with us tonight for our our church Bible study. We're in the we're in the tenth chapter of the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, his feet like pillars of fire. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, for being a God who cares in a world of evil and misery, of apathy and cold-heartedness. Thank you that you are not like that, but that you are good and that all your ways are good. Teach us to trust in your grace. Trust that you love us. Now open your word to us and through and by way of your grace, help us to understand the book of Revelation that we might know your mind and your will for we beg in Jesus' name. Amen. Just as between the sixth and seventh seals, we took a pause and we, in chapter eight, and we considered what was going on from the perspective of heaven. We're gonna do that again between the sixth and seventh trumpets. In particular, I mean, the Bible is taking a break. It's essential that we understand what revelation means from the standpoint, from the viewpoint of heaven. We try to make so many things fit down here on earth. And that's not, that's not necessary and it's counterproductive. We need to see the world, the universe, from, from God's point of view, from heaven's perspective. In chapter 8, we were told, when Jesus opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints, upon the golden altar which is before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth, and there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. On earth, the Roman government was controlling the church. They were oppressing them. They were murdering them. Throughout all of history, this same story has been played out. Satan has attacked the church of God at every turn. He's attacked us from without in the obvious ways, but he's also attacked us from within by putting his people in the midst of us. And we have been tragically oppressed as a result of that, we've had our hearts broken. We've had, because of people we trusted, we've had misery. But from the viewpoint of heaven, we see that God knows and that he is about to issue justice. If the seven seals are the revealed will of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God for the world throughout history, the trumpets declare seven times God's judgment. That's what we're seeing here in chapter 8. But as a prelude to the trumpets, that these trumpets are going to announce, trumpet, God's judgment upon the world. We're taking a break between the sixth and seventh trumpets the last warning, the last judgment, to uh, see two visions. Chapter 10 will be one, and then there'll be another in chapter 11. 
this vision takes us back into heaven, takes our eyes, our minds back into heaven, which is where they need to stay. Heaven is what's important. Earth is an afterthought. Earth is a pale reflection of what goes on in the spiritual world. So there's another mighty angel coming down from heaven. Some people say this is Jesus. The Bible says it's an angel clothed with a cloud. Now, we saw earlier that at the throne of God, there was a rainbow around it. This angel is a rainbow on his head because he comes from the throne of God. The rainbow, which represents the magnificence of God. It also represents God's promise to us that he would never again flood the earth. He would never again destroy everyone with a flood. This angel wears that rainbow. And his face was like the sun. Just as Moses, when he was with God on the mountain, had to put a veil over his face because his face shone so brightly that it would, it would harm the eyes of those who saw him. This angel comes from the throne of God. This is an important angel who comes directly from the throne to make God's pronouncement upon the earth. And his feet like pillars of fire. He's powerful and he's quick. God's justice is coming. It's sure. It will be magnificent. It will be glorious and it will be quick. He had a little book open in his hand, not a closed book like the scroll, that only Jesus was worthy to open. This book is open. In a minute, I'll tell you what, what I think this word, what this book is. He set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. So this, visualize it, and you'll see this is an angel who is as big as the earth. He stands one foot upon the ocean, one foot upon the, the one foot upon the land. This is a, if you see it, if you visualize it, you understand what he's doing. He is claiming the power of God and declaring to the world the judgment, the final judgment of God. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. That indicates his power. The lion can mean Jesus. It can mean royalty. But here it means power. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now there have been untold number of scholars argue what these seven thunders are and what possible meaning they have. I'm going to give you my opinion. And like every other expositor, I'm sure I'm right. Well, no, I'm convinced I'm right. And when the seven thunders, verse 4, uttered their voices, I was about to write because remember John was commanded to write everything that he saw. So he was about to write what they said but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered and do not write them. Now, Ray Summers is, in my mind, the greatest scholar on Revelation. And his book, Worthy as a Lamb, is necessary reading for anyone who wants to understand Revelation better. Even if you disagree with his uh, suppositions, and I do on several points. He is such a fountain of information that it's worth reading. He notes that thunders are warnings. These seven thunders are from seven, the number of spiritual perfection, and they're warnings to the earth. And the voice from heaven says, don't write them down. No more warnings. The trumpets are enough. They're declaring the judgment of God. We see that the trumpets are in themselves warnings. When God judges us, it's a warning. It's a warning to other people. 
who see us, that you're either going to serve God by following him or you're going to serve God by being punished by him and existing as a living warning, a proverb to other people not to behave as you did. Judgment is warning. And now they're saying no more warnings. Now, verse 5 and 6 seem to back that up. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever. See it. Try to visualize it. Who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer. Don't tell us what those warnings are because there's going to be no more delays. People have been warned. Look at the, as we look at the, uh, the seven trumpets, we see that the first trumpet destroyed a third of the earth, the vegetation, the trees. The second trumpet destroyed a third of the um, saltwater world. The third trumpet destroyed a third of the freshwater world. And the fourth trumpet attacked a third of the sky, the sun, the moon, the stars. This is a frightful judgment. And then there were three after that. These three were spiritual. First there was, well, I believe they're physically true. I'm just saying the impact was to be spiritual. The fifth trumpet was the uh, locusts from the pits of hell, the, the, the bottom of the bottomless abyss, who came to torment men for five months. Well, they tormented those who were not Christian. The sixth trumpet, which released an army of 200 million that were, were told destroys a third of all the people on the earth. These are warnings. And the purpose for these these are judgments, and the purpose of these judgments is to act as a warning. At some point, people should wake up and say, Oh my goodness, God is executing judgment upon the earth. I need to repent. But it seems as though we never repent until we're caught. The criminal doesn't repent while he's robbing a bank. He only, only repents in prison later on. Sometimes we have to be hit over the head with a wet mop. The earth is not listening. God has performed judgments upon ju judgment upon judgment, and they have rationalized each one of them and are finding other ways to explain away these judgments. By the way, the seventh trumpet is coming um, in the middle of chapter 11 next week. So here we are with these warnings, these judgments. And the angel of the Lord saying there'll be delays no more. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound the mystery of God would be finished as he declared to his servants the prophets. This ending is not just the ending of Revelation then. It's the ending of the Bible. All of God's prophets throughout all of time have told us about the glory of God and warned us about the wrath of God warmed our hearts with stories of the love of God. And that mystery of just who God is and what he's up to is about to end. With it will be the end of human history on earth. Verse 8, Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again, 
and said, go take the little book, which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So this book is open. It's not a secret. We're going to have to do a little um, supposition in order to um, figure out what it said, but it's not a secret. So we go into this knowing whatever this book is, it's not a secret. I went to the angel and said to him, give me the little book. And he said to me, take and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. I'm not the only one who believes that this is the message of the gospel. And obviously the message here in Revelation. God is going to bring justice. You know, it's a sweet thing when we say that. When we say God's going to make everything right, that's wonderful. We're thrilled. We pray for the day God makes things right. Lord, how long are you going to let evil survive? How long are you going to let this go on? And we beg God to make things right. So it's sweet in our mouth. We want to hear that. We want heaven to declare it's coming. Righteousness is coming. Judgment is coming. But when we digest it, it'll be bitter in our stomachs. Because when God makes everything right, people will be damned for the last time and sent to hell. No more chances. No more opportunity to be saved. There are some Christian groups who claim that you can be saved out of hell. But I don't believe the Bible supports that. If we're going to be told later on that the, the fire of their torment, the smoke of their torment rises up forever and ever. Eternal torment. Hell is forever. And that's bitter. My neighbor who won't accept Christ. When, the, when God's final justice happens, when God finally makes everything right, that neighbor goes to hell. And that's bitter. It should break our hearts. Loved ones are going to hell. people we have struggled with to come to the Lord will burn in an, in an eternal torment and that's bitter we cry out for God's justice not realizing just how horrible it is because sin is horrible if I were not saved by the blood of Jesus I would be deserving of the fires of hell because my sins are horrible. My sins are filthy. My sins are evil. And if I got what I deserve, I would burn in hell. The grace of God is that God loved me enough to sacrifice his only begotten son. Jesus then died in my place. The Bible says God made him who knew no sin to become sin for my sake. So that I might be the righteousness of God. Now I personalized that, but the truth is you could say the same words. Jesus died for you. That grace is necessary. I can't survive without it. Without that grace, I receive the justice of God. And trust me, you don't want to receive the justice of God. You don't want to pay for your sins. You don't want to get what's coming to you because it's horrible. 
and the realization of it is bitter. We're in heaven and we're seeing the glory of God, but we need to remember God's love is also for the lost. It's bitter to him too. He has struggled with the lost. If you're lost, he has struggled with you. And if you'll think about it, you can look back in your, at events in your life where God reached down and tried to shake you and tried to come to you. His Holy Spirit tried to convict you that you were a sinner and that you needed Jesus. It'll be a bitter thing if you refuse that. So he said, take, need it. It'll make your stomach bitter, but it'll be sweet as honey in your mouth. So I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it. And it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. God is going to make everything right. God's going to fix everything. God's going to bring justice. God's going to end evil. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, you must prophesy again. You must preach this. We misunderstand the word prophecy. So many people, if you ask them what prophecy is, they'll say it's foretelling the future. Well, in your Bible, only a small percentage of the prophecies are about the future. To prophesy is to tell to prophesy is to tell God's word, to declare the revelation that God has revealed to you, to tell people what God's told you. A prophet is someone who declares God's mind, God's will, God's heart. And he, the angel told John, you must prophesy again. Now that you've eaten this book, now that you know that God's justice is coming, but that the gospel still offers salvation to whosoever will, now you've got to preach it. To many peoples, many peoples, the, that literally means different ethnic groups, different nations, different tongues, people separated by language. There's some large nations like China, for example, that have multiple languages, multiple tongues within the, the borders of their one country. And kings. You have to prophesy about kingdoms. It's a poetic way of saying you have to prophesy to the whole world. This message needs to be told to everybody that justice is coming and one day it will arrive. It will not delay forever. God will not wait forever on the world to get right. One day he'll make it right. And woe to those who aren't ready. This vision is a vision about God being fed up. Parents have all kind of expressions they use to tell their children, I'm done. I'm up to here. I'm fed up. I'm on my last nerve. We have a lot of expressions to tell the child, I am about to exercise justice. My favorite one was my father's. He used to say, boy, I'm going to cloud up and rain all over you. It's coming. That's the vision. We've been seeing the seals which revealed God's will. The history, God's working is in history. We've been listening to the trumpets, one more to go, which are declaring God's judgment and by way of declaring being existing as a warning. And now we're about to see the end of warnings and the beginning. That means 
a third of the world, a third of the of the earth being destroyed, the world's vegetation being destroyed, was just a warning. The real punishment is going to be worse. A third of the saltwater world being destroyed, marine life, is just a warning. A third of the freshwater world is just a warning. The destruction of the a third of the sky is just a warning. The locusts. The army of 200 million who kill a third of the earth, a third of the population of the earth, these are all warnings. Well, if these are just warnings, if these are just warning shots over the bow, you know, there's a, a point in, um, in our scripture where we're told about the The, um, the fifth and sixth trumpets, the locusts who attack people, men for five months, the sixth trumpet, the army of 200 million. And I'm reading from last week, but it's important to remind you of this. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the work of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. All of this has been to get people to repent. And you would think people would, but they're not. That's the reason justice has to come, ultimately. There has to be an end to warnings. Revelation tells us there is an end to God's patience. He is going to act. But when he does, don't expect it to be all sweetness and sunshine. When God acts, it's going to be so horrible that the first six trumpets are nothing in comparison. This vision of heaven is our thought for today. I hope you can carry it through the week. I hope you gain courage, but also listen to the warnings and heed them. As always, in Christ's service and in yours, I am your pastor. Good night.